All right, dihybrid crosses, this is when I have two um, different genes that I'll be crossing at the same time. Um, so they're a little bit trickier, but um, nothing that you guys can't do. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, in guinea pigs, smooth coat, big S, is dominant over rough coat, little s. And black coat, big B, is dominant over white coat, which is going to be um, little b. So cross two parents with the genotypes big S, little, or big S, little S, big B, little B, crossed with big S, little S, big B, little B. All right, so what you're going to have to do is you need to do what's, what we call FOIL, the parent. So I'm going to start by just showing you what that's going to look like. So um, we have, I'm going to just go ahead and write it out, big S, little S, big B, little B. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically put all the different possible combinations um, into a big Punnett square. So instead of having four boxes, this one is going to have 16. So the first terms of the pair, so that would be this right here, this is going to be the first terms of the pair, are going to be big S and big B. So I'm going to go ahead and write that right here. Big S, big B. Okay. And then I have the outside terms. So remember FOIL, F-O-I-L. Outside terms are going to be big S, little b. And so this is the outside. Okay, so then that's going to be big S and little b. Now notice that I always have an S and a b together. And I'm always going to put the S's before the b's. All right, then I'm going to do the inside terms. So that's the two on the very inside right here. So that's the I for inside. All right, and so that's going to be a little s and a big B. Okay, and then I'm going to do the last pair, which is this last of the term, so little s and little b, and so that's my last. So FOIL, F-O-I-L, and my last is going to be little s, little b. Okay, so that's one of the parents is going to go on the top. The other parent was going to go on the side. And since these parents are exactly the same, I know my combinations are going to be exactly the same. And write our combinations over here on the side. We have big S, big B, big S, little b, little s, big B, and little s, little b. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and make my Punnett square. So this one is big. We have 16 squares here. Okay, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change color pen so we can see the offspring pretty clearly in the middle. All right, now, um, so a couple tricks to the dihybrid crosses is that I need to make sure that I keep my S's together and my B's together. And since I have S's first, um, when we look at our first square here, I basically I'm going to bring down this S right here. I have a big S, and I'm going to bring over this S, which is another big S. And then I have these two big B's, so then I'm going to keep my big B's together, okay? And then I'm going to follow that trend, so we have big S, big S. And then I have a big B and a little B. And remember that I always put my capital letter before my lowercase letter, so I would write big B, then little B, okay? So here I have a big S and a little S, so I'm going to put my big S first. And then I'm going to do the little one, and then these are both big B. So we have big B and then another big B. Okay, and then I have a big and a little s. So big and little. And I have a big B and a little b. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, power through this and um, we'll get all 16 blocks done. So big S, big S. And then big B, little b. Okay, and um, again, the S's are tricky, so I try and make sure that I make my, uh, oh, that's a big B first, and then our little B. I try to make sure that I make my S's extra small um, or extra big so we can tell the difference between them. Okay, and S, little S, big B, little B. And then we have little s, little s. Okay, 
Now all these letters inside here represent different genotypes. Okay, so we have, this is a genotype, big S, big S, big B, big B, that's one genotype. This is a different genotype. This is a different genotype. Um, so for a problem like this with all these different genotypes, I'm not going to ask you for the genotypic ratio. But we will go ahead and talk about the phenotypic ratio. And so when we do the phenotypic ratio, we're basically looking at all the different possible phenotypes there are. So there's going to be four different phenotype combinations. And I'm going to start with ones that are dominant and dominant. So if I'm dominant for... Big S, that means I'm smooth coat. So we're going to go ahead and say smooth, oops, S-M-O-O, -O, smooth coat. Okay. And the B is for black. So smooth, I should have written, um, let's go smooth black coat. Okay. And then I can have, um, so that would be if I'm big S and big B. Okay, so that means that my, I have a big S in there and I have a big B. And then I can be smooth and black. I can also be um, smooth, which is dominant. And instead of being black, this time I can be white. So smooth white coat. Okay. Another possible combination is instead of being smooth, you can be rough coat. So you can be rough black coat. Okay. Or you can be recessive for both of those traits, which is going to be rough white coat. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's um, actually count up how many we have of each. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and cross off as I do that. So I'm looking for, um, we're going to start with the smooth and the black. So I'm looking for a capital S and a capital B. So in this case, I have a capital S and a capital B. So there's one, okay? This has capital S, capital B. That's another one. I'm just gonna make tally marks. All right, I have a capital S, capital B. So that's another one. I have capital S, capital B. Okay, so we're up to four. Capital S, capital B, we're up to five. Capital S, Oh, lowercase b. So if I'm a lowercase b, I am white. So we're going to go smooth and white. We'll put one there. Okay. Um, now we're back to big S, big B. So that is going to be smooth and black. So we'll put another tally mark there. All right. And we're up big S, little b. Okay. So that's going to make it smooth and white. Okay. All right. And then we have big S, big B. So that is back to smooth and black. Big S, big B, again, we're smooth and black. Oh, now we have something different that we haven't seen yet. Little S, big B. So little S is rough and big B is black. So we're gonna put one here, okay? And then we're, again, we're little S and big B. So we're rough and black coat. Okay, we've seen this one before, big S and big B. Okay. So we're up to nine for the smooth and black coat. And we have big S, little b, that will be a smooth white coat, okay? Little s, big b, that is rough and black coat. And then we have our, finally, our last one, which we have not seen yet, and that's little s, little b, and that is a rough white coat, okay? And so if I'm going to look at my phenotypic ratio, which is a very common question to be asked, when I cross two parents that are big s, little s, big b, little b, Okay, this is my other parent right there. So that means the parents are heterozygous for both traits. My phenotypic ratio is going to be 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. Okay, so 9 of them are going to be dominant for both traits. 3 of them are going to be dominant and recessive or recessive dominant. And then 1 will be recessive for both traits. Okay, so you should um, memorize that ratio. If I cross two heterozygous, my phenotypic ratio is 9 to 3 to 3 to 1.